The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. This is America's Webradio.com, the best in chat radio designed just for you. Mario, how are you doing? We were just having a great discussion with David offline, but briefly, Wong Kim Mark, is it relevant today? Is it relevant? Yes, very relevant. Okay. Oh, it's relevant for two reasons. Okay. First of all, it, it, it construes, interprets the 14th Amendment, because the question was, what does uh, subject to, to the jurisdiction, the jurisdiction mean? mean? Right. Yeah, and the court basically used the English common law as an aid. Mm-hmm. Basically, the court said, you know, uh, under the English common law, if you were in the dominion of, of, of the king, you were, you were a subject. You were his subject. He protected you. You were bound to follow his laws. So, therefore... We're going to say that all you have to be is just be, be here. You're subject to the laws and uh, the, you know, the parents, so to speak. Okay, they're, they're subject to the jurisdiction. If the child is born here, then he's a citizen of the United States under the 14th Amendment. Okay? Now, that's not, the court is not saying that he's a natural-born citizen. How, how do we know that? Okay? Mm-hmm. The, the court cites twice a, a very uh, uh, interesting article by Horace Binney. Okay, and it's called The Allegiance of the United States Under the Present Naturalization Laws, 1853. Now, they were, they were fascinating because there were like three different editions of this. And uh, for some reason, this part that I'm going to tell you about mm-hmm. was taken out. But the court, the court uses the article where it, it, he, uh, 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 Benny did not take it out. He uses that part. And that part, this is what it says. It says, uh, I'll just give you the, the, the main part here. Let's see. The right of citizenship never descends in the legal sense, either by the common law or under the common naturalization acts. It is incident to birth in the country, or it is given personally by statute. Now, that's the right of citizenship, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, here's the, 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 the crucial thing. The child of an alien, if born in the country, is as much a citizen as the natural-born child of a citizen, and by operation of the same principle. Okay. What does that mean? Okay, it means, first of all, what does the, the same principle mean? It means being born in the country. Okay, so the court basically is saying is that, you know, even if you're born to aliens, okay, because you're born in the country, you're as much a citizen as a natural born citizen. Okay. You see? Mm-hmm. So the court distinguished a natural born citizen from a citizen. From a citizen under the 14th Amendment. Exactly. Me, me, at least in this judge's eyes, although he never defined what natural born citizen was. Just that there was a distinction. Of the, of Article 2. Well, he cited, he cited minor. Right. You know, yeah, earlier in, in the decision, uh, when he talks about uh, whether the court is bound, is like, was it really committed to excluding children, you know, born in, in the jurisdiction to alien parents? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, the, the court said, well, you know, because the, you know, the slaughterhouse case said that if you were born to aliens in, in America, you weren't a citizen under the 14th Amendment. That was in dicta in the slaughterhouse case. So, but, but the point is that, that later on, okay, Juan gets, see, in Minor versus Happersat, uh, 1875, very unanimous U.S. Supreme Court decision to find a natural-born citizen as the children born in the country to citizen parents. That, okay, that's, that's Minor, 1875. Uh, then later on, the court in, in Wong does not modify that definition. You know, it doesn't distinguish the definition. It doesn't, it doesn't have to, to, to wrestle with it to make Wong a citizen. Right. Because it just uses the 14th Amendment and, it, and the jurisdiction clause. Right. It says, all, okay. all, it, here's a quote from Wong. It says, A child born in the U.S. of parents of Chinese descent who at the time of his birth are subject to the emperor of China but have a permanent domicile and residence in the U.S. and are there carrying on business and are not employed in a diplomatic or official capacity in the emperor of China becomes at the time of his birth a citizen of the United States. Right. Now go back to Article 2. What does it say? If you're a citizen of the United States, you've got to be one at the adoption. Right. It, you see? So Wang, uh, Wang is, was a citizen. He can't, he's not president because he's neither a natural-born citizen nor was he is he a citizen president? of the United States at the adoption. Right. So, he, so he's not eligible. So let's, t- let's put this in the current day because we only have about 10 minutes left. Uh, the argument that we've always heard uh, since Obama was elected is that he wasn't born in the United States. Which, which let, let's ignore that because it's not true. One, two. The better argument is he shouldn't be president because his he's not a natural-born citizen because his father wasn't a citizen of the U.S. at the time of his birth. Right. And that, therefore, extending that further, Marco Rubio cannot run for president of the United States. Right. Because his parents were not naturalized when he was born. Bobby Jindal. 
Bobby Jindal's parents were not born. Correct. Uh, they were not citizens. Uh, uh, Amy, what, what is it? Nikki Haley? That's uh, correct. South Nikki Carolina. Haley. And uh, Ted Cruz, whose dad is a Cruz. Canadian, uh, didn't naturalize until a few years ago. Uh, that seems to exclude a lot of the star power of the Tea Party. <laughs> now, now, here's one to throw in. Uh, Rick Santorum, yeah. he is a natural-born citizen. Oh, damn, really? Yes, he oh, is, because now, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, chatter, so to speak, that he's not, but he is. He is, because you know, his, his father became a citizen when he was seven years old. But, you know, derivatively through, through his uh, but he P- was Pietro. The, that's the same standard that Oba- Obama's father was not a citizen. It's citizen at the time. Your argument is citizen at the time they are born. And if, his, if Rick Santorum's father didn't become a citizen until Rick was 17 years old, he can't be a natural-born citizen under your argument. No, that, that's not cor- Well, first of all, the, the, what, your, your facts are not correct. Okay. okay. Because, because uh, uh, Rick's father became a citizen in 1930. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so well, he was a citizen. So he was a citizen when Rick was born. Okay, okay. Yeah, he was right. a citizen. Yeah, in 1930, okay. so you, you know, the confusion comes in because they say, oh, look at this nat- uh, citizen, uh, what do you call it, certificate of, of uh, citizenship. Mm-hmm. He got his certificate of citizenship after Rick was born. But that's only proof of citizenship. That's not citizenship. So his dad acquired citizenship when his, his father naturalized right. in the United States. Right, right. in 1930. Yeah. Yeah. So, plus, okay. plus, plus, he even well, went into the war. Bad. I was that is that, 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 that is too bad. I was looking for anybody to get out. I, I told you, you're right. I, I was, I didn't understand the fact you had said when he was. Yeah, seven you years misunderstood old. what he said. Yeah, I misunderstood. But, you know, Rocky said. brought up a good point. This, this may or may not be an issue in the next election, but go fast forward thirty years. We, you have an entire generation of kids who are being born here right now, whose parents aren't citizens, who are going to be excluded under this theory. From being president of the United States, correct? Well, yeah, well, well, you will do it now, and don't do it like, oh, is Obama a natural-born citizen? Because then politics takes over. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's like anything. It's like a naturalized citizen can't be like like uh, Schwarzenegger, right? Right. We, we know, he, you know, we, we don't go around saying, oh, well, he's a good man. You know, he's more loyal than that one. You know, well, we should make an exception. He's, a, you know, we don't judge uh, loyalty. That you know, it's not proper. You know, it, 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 that that's the rule. We accept that rule. How right. come now we have to like try to change the rule but, for but, for but, Obama? But but we're not we're not even talking about it in the context of Obama. We're talking about it in terms of there are literally millions of children born in this country to parents who are not citizens at the time of their birth, who are citizens of the United States. Over the next 30, 40 years, these kids will uh, are, are are loyal in every way to the United States. They will be excluded from running for, for this office. Now, and I, I renew my question, is it time for a constitutional amendment to, de- to determine someone – so that we can determine someone's allegiance another way so as to not disqualify all of these people who will, will – uh, who are now ineligible to run for president because there's no way that this can be cured – Without, because I'm conceding your argument is correct. There's no way for them to become president or run for president if this is not cured before that time. Yes, yes, and, and your your question is is very valid. I mean, that's really the the proper question is you know assuming that the the, the citizenship uh, you know the natural born citizen definition is what it is. You know, should we as a nation change it? That's perfectly valid. Right, and I ask you, are you in favor of a constitutional amendment to change this so that there is another way to de- that we can determine people's allegiance so as not to disqualify a large segment of society? Very representative segment, I might add. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not in, in favor of it because it's like any, it's like a corporation where, you know, you, let's say you have to have a president of a corporation. Okay, IBM, for example, you know, he's got to be, he's got to be Mr. IBM and that's it. You know, he can't have an interest in, in uh, Sony or an interest in, uh, I don't know what, you know, Apple or something. You know, you've got to be totally committed to IBM and that's it. No, no, you know, no secret stock deals or, you know, secret bank accounts, type, that type thing. So the same thing applies to the corporation, you know, the United States. <laughs> I, 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 I hesitate when I say that because some people use that to, to, you know, with this crazy idea about the United States is a corporation. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I do. Yeah, but, but – it's you know it's a it's a um, um, what do you call it? it's a legal a legal person okay you, you know the leader has to be totally committed you know we talk about a conflict of interest whether it's uh, uh, psychological whether it's you know like uh, conscious unconscious uh, you know any which way you want to talk about it you know the, the founding fathers they saw it as a problem 
So we have to examine that. Is, you know, can there be a real conflict of interest if you know, your parents are not citizens and they're, gonna, you know, they're always going to throw in for their, you know, the, you go to the soccer game uh, and you, you know, you're rooting for the other uh, 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 team that's from a foreign country rather than your own team type thing, you know? <laughs> so what if, they're, what if so a, lot, a large portion of these children are born here citizens and their parents become citizens when they're relatively young, five, six years old? And so this is a very common scenario, and all of these children whose allegiance can't be questioned, their parents' allegiance can't really be questioned, their parents weren't citizens at the time they were born. You're, by virtue of what you're saying, you'd be excluding a large, very representative portion of the populace from ever uh, holding this office. And I, I just think that that's – to not recognize that, that what, that's what the problem is, is, is – Well, you know, I think about this in the context of my own family. My dad is the children of immigrants. Uh, they did not naturalize until my dad was born, after my dad was born. They both naturalized. Uh, and uh, my dad uh, fought for the United States. Uh, uh, he was buried with military honors. Uh, I don't know a single person who loved America more than my dad. Um, and to say, sorry, Dad, you can't be president of the United States because you're only to naturalize in time. Travesty. I think that's a policy question that we certainly as a country need, need to, to address. address. Right. Uh, unfortunately, nobody's going to address that while Barack Obama is sitting in the White House. <laughs> this is not going to happen. You know, the, yeah. the focus should be who's going to sit as president, not, not that somebody who really is, is not going to be president, that he can't be president. I mean, your father probably never really had an interest in being president. So now we're going to change the rule. We should be grateful for that, you know, by the way. We're going to change the rule because your father can't be president. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, what's more important is who's going to sit there. You know, who's going to be the president if that person satisfies the Constitution? And so you could make this argument. I could be born in Mexico, okay, uh, one day before my mother entered the United States. Mm-hmm. Okay? I'm not, I'm not a citizen. I'm an alien. Right. Okay? One, by one day. Now, let's say I'm born in, in uh, Arizona. One day, okay, after she enters, oh, I can be president now. It's, you see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a wonderful argument. But so why is – so you're fine with the arbitrariness of it going. That's what I don't necessarily understand. Well, we, we, we have to end. David is kicking us off the air, Mario. This has been awesome. Uh, very exciting conversation, one of the best shows we've had. And we thank you uh, for appearing on the show and bringing a bit of Jersey to the South. We really appreciate you. I thank you so much, Charles and Rocky. I appreciate it. Of course, uh, David Moxley. Thanks, Thanks very Mario. much. It's America's Web Radio, the Immigration Hour. Till next week. Thank you. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. <laughs>